Hello. In this video, we're going to be talking about the first two properties of water. So let's not waste any of your time. Let's get right to it. Now, when we're talking properties of water, again, we want to stress that hydrogen bond uh, is what's bringing this about. But the first property of water that we're going to talk about is that water has a high specific heat. And that's super important. And what that means is that it takes a large amount of energy to change the temperature of water. Okay? This is what keeps the West Coast temperature so stable. Because the ocean is absorbing all that energy. Okay? It is, it's keeping uh, you know, California, Washington, Oregon from getting super hot in the summertime think about here in our summertime when it's August and the Sun is just beating down upon us we get extremely hot that's because we don't have a large body of water uh, around to absorb all that energy if you think about a boiling pan of water you turn the burner on high it takes a long time for that water to start to boil because it takes a lot of energy to to change the temperature of the water. Uh, so this property is super important because it really modifies or absorbs a lot of energy that would typically, in our case, go towards uh, weather, climate. Uh, if we, if we, if, um, it would certainly be drier. Uh, so that is the main aspect of the first property of water. Okay, the second property of water we're going to look at is that water has a high heat, high vaporation uh, possibilities, high heat of vaporation. And it's not so much that water will vaporize. That's super important when it comes to uh, the, rain, the water cycle and making sure that clouds are formed and it rains, uh, move the water around the country. Uh, but it also, when it vaporizes, it takes a lot of heat. Okay, you can see the baby elephant there spraying itself down with water um, and that's helping to absorb the heat uh, on the skin. We use the same concept when we sweat and we try to cool ourselves down by sweating. Okay, our body, our cells put a bunch of water on our cell, on our skin surface and that water absorbs energy, in this case heat. Okay, just like it helps to buffer the state of California or Oregon's weather. I mean, if you don't believe me, go to Oregon in August and wake up to a 65 degree morning. Where here, we're going to wake up to an 85 degree morning. Uh, but anyway, the water absorbs a lot of heat. And what our body is trying to do to cool ourselves down by sweating is to have the water absorb the heat and pull it away from us. And then when the water evaporates, it takes that heat with us. So it's like if you were trying to put out a fire by removing small parts of the fire. So say you got a building on fire. The fire engines show up. Instead of dousing it with water, they would just go in and take a portion of the fire away from the larger fire. And then that fire would, would they, could, they put it in you know, a rocky area, then it could just burn and go out. And they go and take another portion of the fire away. And again, put that in a safe area and just let it burn till it's done. Eventually, the fire would be put out uh, by removing the fire, not by just dousing it with water or taking it you know, where it can't breathe anymore. But that's the idea of sweating. It's pulling heat away from our body uh, to help cool us down. Uh, and that's the process that our cell uses to. But anyway, that's our second property of water. It absorbs a lot of heat on its way to becoming a gas. All right, that's our video over the first two properties of water. And our next time we get together, we'll be talking about the third and fourth properties of water. We'll see you then.